Got it. And attention, everybody, attention, everybody. This is the countdown. This is the countdown. Are you ready? This is the countdown. Yes, this is the countdown. Ladies and gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen, this is Fabio Marquez, and this is Fabulous with Fabio, the talk show that reveals how fabulous you can be, bringing to you fabulous people that will inspire you, that will guide you in this journey to achieve true success, sustainable success. This is in YouTube channel, Fabio Marquez 007, Fabio Marquez 007, in Fabulous with Fabio podcast. You can also hear this interview later in our other podcast, Powerful Insights for Business. So this interview is raw, is authentic. There's no cuts, no post-production. It's live and real as life is. And I only bring guests that I know can handle this situation. And my guest today is a fabulous human being. You know, you have some coaches out there, maybe millions of them, but you have very few that I can qualify as fabulous coaches. And this lady is one of those fabulous coaches. So welcome, Mariana Macias. How are you today? Yay. Thank you so much, Fabio, for having me here. I am very excited and I am doing fabulous today. I am very, very, very happy to be here with all of you. I want to thank you so much for taking the time to talk to us today because I know you're going to add tremendous value to our audience. They're going to be really thinking about their lives and their performance and their, you know, their jobs and careers in a different way after listening to you. So thank you so much. So let's start right. Let's jump right into your life. <laughs> let's do that. I, I want to know <laughs> why did you decide to become this amazing, fabulous coach you are today? When was the click? When did you decide to do it? Well, do you want the soft story or do you want the, you know, like the, the strong one? Now, one. just give me everything. I'm going to ask you a lot of questions. I mean, I think, you know, we are all here because we all have a big purpose in life. And of course, it takes time to find it out. You know, I'm not saying that you can find it or you should find it at some specific age. I think every path and every journey is very different. But as me, you know, I was always very conflicted uh, and I grew up very confused all the time about what I wanted from life. I wasn't sure about not even my my career, you know. I basically chose it like just saying, okay, well, this is the the thing that I think I'm going to be good at, or maybe this is a, the subject that I think it's not going to come with a lot of maths. I don't know. Literally, I was just picking it because this might be something that was going to be for me, you know, su suitable for me. And then, you know, I chose marketing, by the way, if you were wondering what was. Uh, and then, you know, I continued to that path. I even went to do a master's degree thinking that I wanted to do more marketing. So why not <laughs> a master in international marketing and then marketing in sports? And I was very inspired through that journey until I did my internship in New York with another fabulous coach. Uh, and she was, you know, like a great example for me. I, I started like seeing you know, the way she operated, but mostly I saw something on her that I was like, I want that, you know? The, the way she was expressing her energy. And I was like, well, I, I should get more curious about that. So I started asking more and more until I realized that, yeah, it was not only her job, the coaching thing, but it was literally a, a, a lifestyle, you know, for her living it. And then I wanted to know more about coaching. So I got very, very, very curious about that. I started reading more. I started getting in conscious about what was coaching. And then I remember perfectly, I went back uh, to Mexico City, which, by the way, I am from there. So I went back until my master's degree and all of my, uh, you know, learning path was over. And I was just ready to get back and, and do marketing for a living. But once you have tasted a little bit of what it can be possible for you and what would you like, I was just like not the same, you know, I was doing marketing and I was living my ordinary life. Just thinking, okay, I still want to know what can be possible for me. And maybe I should do coaching, but I saw it like way older. Like, okay, let me do that whenever I I keep passing the years by. And then maybe as a CMO, I, I 
I can be a, a coach, right? Uh -huh. So unexpectedly, life threw me an incident, which I had a lot of time to rest, you know, with my feelings, with myself. And and I would and I had a lot of time, you know, while I was at the hospital thinking about my existence. And then that was that moment when it hit me and I say, hey, you know, life is short to be doing something that maybe it's not my true passion. And I knew that feeling when I was learning more about coaching. So let me go back to the track and maybe actually explore it. And so do that for the rest of my life, you know, who knows? But right now we've been doing that for a while, at least, you know, for me to be in a consistent path. And yeah, yeah that's how it clicked me that moment. That's beautiful. That's beautiful. You know, it's it's so interesting because today I recorded a video that I'm going to post tomorrow about the most important question we should ask ourselves, right? What do I want from life? So right. this is the first and most important question. What do you want? So you had that moment when you were at the hospital and you think, okay, what do I really want? And then you decided to pursue this career, which is so, so beautiful. I remember I started coaching when I was 22 in 1992, even before all the coaching uh, certification oh God, yeah. started. Yeah. So I know the feeling. I was an engineer. I was studying marketing myself. And I, I had this, this moment. I, I want to share what I know. I want to help people find their paths. I want to help people grow. And you found that, you know, that vocation very early in life as well. And that's why you were so good at it because you're doing with your heart and soul you're not doing for the money you're right. doing because this is your true passion in life this is your purpose and you want to make a difference that's why you are on this show right now because you're different from so many other coaches you really are here to make a difference so i commend you for that and i thank you for taking this journey so many people are benefiting from that decision you took a few years ago this is beautiful oh. And I think it's a bold journey, right? Because at first I wasn't even sure, like you just said it. I didn't even knew how much even to, you know, to charge or or how the people was actually having a life or doing a life, you know. But I just just knew, just knew that this was my calling and that this was part of my purpose, that I constantly work in getting to know who I am I and mm. what am I here for, you know. Yeah, you know, and, and I know that your your customers, your clients, are, are executives, right? Mostly executive C level executives and so on. But any anyhow, I want to say to the coaches watching this because so many people may be watching this want to be coaches someday, or they dream about being a coach, or they are already coaches, but they're not so successful. I want to just highlight: if you want to be successful as a coach, as you are, as I am, you need to do it from your heart. Not for the money, because you have to be always studying, always humble to study, to, you know, get into the science of psychology and human behavior so you can really help your clients. So if you're doing just for the money, you're going to get tired of studying. You're going to be a lousy coach. But if you love what you're doing and you're doing it with purpose, you're going to be a wonderful human being helping other, other human beings as well. Am I right with that? 100%. And I would totally add service. You know, I think the word service, doing it from a, a, a sense of mm -hmm. wanting to serve the other one in a way of, you know, of contribution. I think that's that's key, like doing it with a purpose, you know, your life purpose, and then mm -hmm. also with the spirit of, of serving, you know, the other person. 100%. That's perfect. Let's go deeper into your purpose, right? Because, uh, yes, let's do it with heart to serve to the best of our ability. Let, you know, tell us a little bit more about your purpose in life through coaching. What do you want to accomplish through coaching? Mm, I love that. First of all, I think that I want to be able to be this safe space for others. That's mm. the first thing. I really, I really want to make feel the other person safe because that's a beautiful feeling to, to get to have you know when you say like oh my gosh and not with me as a person like oh mariana you're my safe space no 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 it's just like saying wow now that that you are giving me this space or that we're building it together you know i feel safe to explore you know these these areas of my life or i feel safe to actually respond to myself these questions so I want people, first of all, to be safe in order for them to, to get deeper, you know, 
within their reflections, within their lives, but also so on discovering what else can be mm -hmm. possible for them. But that's the first thing, like creating and providing this safe space for them to thrive. This is so important because I know a lot of people, they go through life just pretending. Mm. They go through life just with this mask, what they believe people expect them to be as executives, as fathers, as mothers, right? As sons, as so if you if you're not able as a coach to create this safe space where people can truly reveal themselves to you and to themselves, they will never find out what they're able to achieve in life. Because if they're using their masks, they're not themselves, they don't know their, their core essence, so they can never see their potential. So what you're saying is so, so uh, fundamental, right? Create this safe space and, and a relationship of trust where people can remove their masks and be themselves to you. So you can ask them the powerful questions you need to ask, and they're going to give you sincere and honest answers that will open their horizons to new possibilities. 100%, 100%. And one thing about you mentioned, which is even more powerful, is like sometimes they get so confused between so many masks that they mm. lose their essence. And they genuinely do not know anymore who they are. That's that's it, you know, like the saddest part that sometimes it's like, I'm not pretending anymore. The thing is like, I I forgot who, who I was, you know, or I don't even know who am I right now. So when we create this space, it's, it's a way for me of saying, I see you, you know, I see the person you can become and I see the essence that you have. But the fact here is not that I see them. Is that, are you able to see yourself through that, you know? Yeah. You know, and you and I, I believe both of us have already experienced this amazing feeling of people opening up with us and crying, right? Uh, happiness, tears, because they finally see themselves as they are. They don't need to pretend anymore. They feel free to grow and prosper. And if, yeah. if you're watching here this conversation and you feel like, oh, I want to be a coach, you, you you will only know that you are a good coach when you're able to see that, witness that. Someone opening up in happiness tears with you because they're finally free. So uh, it's 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 amazing. It's amazing, Mariana. Yeah. Share with us, please, if you can. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Without names, without names. One experience. I know you 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 have had many, but one experience where you could really feel like, oh my God, in this session, I open up that person and finally she saw the light. And, you know, without getting to details, of course, because I don't want you to review your clients, but share with us one experience that was amazing for you and your client. Hmm. This is a tough uh, question, you know, because... I constantly think about all of that. And for me, I every know. session. Every <laughs> I know session, it's a tough question. That's why I asked you. you know? I'm challenging like, you. <laughs> it's like every session with my clients is in my heart. But I can tell that one of my favorite sessions is when they discover their specific life purposes, you know? Because I think that this topic is, is so profound, but at the same time, it's so generic for, for people out there. And they are like, yeah, we come to this world to help or we come to this world to be happy. And it's like, Yes and yes, but that's a consequence of we all have our very unique, you know, life purpose. Mm -hmm. And just helping people to, to get and discover that, it's a beautiful and a very intense and, and intimate, you know, like, like, how do you say it, like journey. So one of the things, you know, that, that has been like one of the biggest sessions with my clients is whenever you introduce a question of like, yes. Who are you without your roles? You know, yeah. without the family roles you play, without your professional roles, without your titles, without anything that you think it describes or characterizes you in essence, pure essence, who you are, right? And then in that moment, like they instantaneously just like 
oh my god they freaked out right it's just like I don't know or like what kind of question is that like how, what am I supposed to tell you I don't know but then when you keep going and going deeper and like okay let's do the exercise together you're not doing this by yourself right that's why I'm here so those kind of sessions mm -hmm. where actually they are challenging themselves and they are actually questioning who am I being you know from the last years or or who am I, but without all of the things that I think it, it had made me or construct me, taking all of that away and, and redefining yourself into identity. It's, it's, it's a beautiful session, you know, or it's like, Whoa. You know, a lot of people, sometimes they overreact to the idea of coaching they sometimes think like, okay, so if I go through a coaching program, I'll probably have to, what, change jobs, change career, change families. <laughs> what what am I supposed to do? But it's not always the case, right? Sometimes it's just changing their perspective mm -hmm. and their attitude towards what they do and their roles. 100%. The most depressing thing, I believe, one human being can can experiences going through life without ever questioning if they're going into the right direction, right? And then when they are 40, 50, 60, or 70, it doesn't matter how much money they have, they feel miserable mm -hmm. because they feel like they didn't really lead their journey. They were just going with the wind and whatever, whatever, right? So I, I know so many people, they make a lot of money, but they're so depressed and sad because they never had a coach, a true coach like yourself, asking them the right questions and guiding them through the honest process of self-discovery. Mm -hmm. So, and this is a delicate job to do, right? right? That's why I'm so serious about coaching. I'm so professional about coaching and that's why you're here and i don't invite many coaches here unless i know they're very good because you are very responsible with, you know with every step of what you're doing with your clients and i want you to share with with us here the principles that guide your life mm -hmm. and your work in coaching okay. your personal principles that you know okay. serve you as guidelines to help you do a good job? Wow. Thank you for that question. I think uh, this is very relevant because you just said it. I think coaching is, is a big responsibility and a big job mm -hmm. because, again, mm -hmm. I think nowadays we are always confusing even coaching with mentoring, with consulting, and not know, you know? It's like... First, the, the main foundations of coaching is questions, you know, questioning, opening the space. So if you ask me, I think the number one thing that leads my life and that it's also leads the way of coaching, you know, it's integrity. For me, I think that, wow, I really, 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 you know, take serious my word, first of all. And, and because of that, I also value the power that it has when I say yes, when I say no, when I say I am doing this or, or the commitment it takes for me to accept something and also the, the commitment it takes for me to say not now or, or, or I don't, you know, I don't think this is aligned to. So integrity for me is key, key in the process as well as integrity with my coaching, you know. I'm not going to ask what I think it's a nice thing to do or 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 how am I feeling today. It's also being very, 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 you know, coherent with what you are saying. That that would be, you know, I would say that that's the second thing that I think, you know, we need to preach what we teach. And in some point, it's just like, I do believe that, yes, we are coaches and we are also humans. We can't be like, pretending that oh my gosh I'm the coach and then I have the perfect life and everything no no we also do struggle and we also have challenges because we're human beings but I'm also using my tools you know and I'm also 
questioning and doing the work. And of course, I also have a coach. So we need to also practice what we teach. And, and if I truly believe in coaching, it's because I did the process, you know, as a coachee first. And by the way, I keep doing it. You know, that's that's something very important. So be be having that congruent, you know, uh, congruency in life. I think it's super important. And then I would say that the third one would be, well, and this is one that I keep working on, but but that I love. And it's like self-compassion. I think that it's very, very beautiful when you are coaching and when you are living without judging your coachee that you're just being the safe space and sometimes it's like hey we are so good doing that with our coaches and again we need to also have it with ourselves I think it's part and it's key on on coaching and and making us better coaches practicing self-compassion you know so hundred percent. I would say those those three are are very important to me. This is beautiful. So integrity, humility to stay humble, keep uh, learning and you know practicing what you preach and compassion. Yeah, this is beautiful, especially you know, and you said listening without judging. This is so hard to do. and it's really one of the most important parts of being a coach. Are you able to listen without judging? Because the minute you judge, you jump into the problem solver mode mm -hmm. and you start giving advice, judge. right? So it's so important to listen because if you really listen, you nurture that safe space you were talking about. You promote and nurture that safe space. That person really feels like he or she is loved, is appreciated, is understood, and therefore they can open up. And only after listening completely with all senses, then you can really elaborate the next question that will help that person go deeper into their self-awareness or self-discovery and start solving the problems themselves, right? So as right. coaches, we are guides, not masters mm -hmm. and, and and that's beautiful that you you know uh you brought this to our attention you can be a master you can be a mentor you can be a coach there's a the right time for each one of those roles and when you are in the coach role you really have to allow the other person to reveal themselves mm -hmm. and find the answers themselves and you will act as this guide for the safe space and asking the right questions to help them get to that point where they go like aha mm -hmm, mm -hmm. we don't steal that pleasure from them right we want to guarantee they will have this erect moment and say wow this the feels this feels so nice so i really appreciate your your answer it was very deep and i hope people watching go back and listen to you again so they really you know capture the essence of what you just told us i, I want to go now into a, uh, another element of our interview with you i want you to share with us you know i've been studying the signs of success since i was 11 <laughs> and one of the key elements i found that really help helps people be successful and stay successful is our capacity to talk to ourselves mm -hmm. And act ours, act as our own coach or mentor every now and then, right? Because not always we have our coach in a available to us. So I believe we can be and we should be our self-coach sometimes, our self-mentor sometimes, our self-master sometimes. And this is related to this inner communication, this inner dialogue. Mm -hmm. We are always listening to some voices inside our heads, right? And some voices are negative, some voices are not so empowering. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. And I really believe that every successful human being has the power to dominate this inner conversation with positive, reinforcing words. 
if you can share with us what are the most important mm. positive communication that you use inside your head whenever you're facing some challenge. I love that. I love that. Well, first of all, I always say that there is always a way if you are committed. So thinking for me, that takes me to another inner dialogue with me that is questioning what are the things that I am committed to and why? Why is that, right? Mm -hmm. So that always helped me to have clarity in order to say, oh, if I am committed to this, it's because this matters to me. And why? Because this and that is connected to something else deeper. So, you know, having that mantra, if you call it like that, or that affirmation, I love it because that's very true. If, if you are committed, there will always be a way. And that also helps me to gain, you know, uh, motivation and, and keep thinking that it is possible to reach it. Then another thing that I always love to repeat to myself, and maybe this sounds a little bit more hippie dippy or, you know, like <laughs> more no spiritual, but, but I think it's super important. It's, well, I I love my spirituality and I love my relationship with God. And I, I always repeat to myself, yes, love got me, you know, like God loves me. Yes, God loves me, you know. So reminding me constantly that God loves me, it's always giving me like, yes, I'm winning in my life. And this this suddenly happened for good or this, uh, I don't know, give me the outcome that I wanted and all of that. Because again, life is beautiful to me and life is always giving me upgrades because God loves me, you know? So I think that one is also a very powerful one that I constantly repeat and that I love to be reminded that God loves me, you know? Uh, that, yeah. Go ahead. Yeah, no, that's a good point. And uh, I hope everybody watching realizes what you just told us. You told us that you're not afraid of expressing your beliefs. You're not afraid of accepting your spirituality the way it is and accepting uh, positive thinking that helps you keep you know, keep going. Some people are so ashamed or afraid of expressing their beliefs or their you know, religion, whatever. Uh, but spirituality is above any kind of religion. It, it's your connection to whatever you believe, right? And if you don't believe in anything, if you, if you think you are the center of the universe... <laughs> It's very hard to stay positive because the is too high. you feel alone, you feel lonely, right? So I also believe there's a divine entity somewhere watching over me and protecting me and guiding me. Even when I'm going through very tough times and I'm going through a tough time right now, you know, right? It's, uh, I don't feel alone. I don't feel afraid because I feel connected with something that is good and powerful and everything that is happening in, in my life is is for a reason, is to teach me a lesson, is to you know make me stronger or or wiser or or somehow better. Hmm. So I really like the way you expressed your your faith, your spirituality, your connection to the divine. And I respect you so much and admire you for that. Thank you for sharing. No, thank you. I think that you just mentioned the key for me is that this is my relationship, you know. And again, I I never try to oh put ourselves in boxes as mm -hmm. as religions because I think you know we all have our different connections. That's okay. But mm -hmm. for me, it's my relationship. And then I don't know if my relationship then inspires you to have a relationship with a uh, God or 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 whatever you know you choose to to call it. That's amazing. Then because I think we do. A need and it's important to have a stronger relationship in our lives you know at the end of the day I always believe that the quality of our lives is related honestly with the quality of our relationships and this spiritual relationship it's key perfect perfect well said well said let me ask you one thing yeah I'm curious what kind of what kind of um complaints or explanations your clients give you when they justify why they need a coach or why they need coaching they come to you and say okay i think i need coaching because what do they tell you uh, that's a good one 
First of all, I think it, it comes with a lot of misconceptions, I, I might say, but they usually come with this speech of saying, hey, well, first of all, I need a coach because I do not have clarity. And what are my next steps? Uh huh. Mm -hmm. So they come in order to find clarity. Second one, they think again, like coaching is going to resolve all the problems, which it might, you know, but it comes <laughs> with a process on it. We got to be honest. But yeah. but they are like, hey, um, I just need my promotion. And maybe if I get coached, I will get there. Right. Um, other thing that they always come with me is just saying, like, I am not in the place where I know I should and I could be. And I need help in terms of unleashing that potential to get there, which I love. And another one, I would say also that they feel they need help or they say I want help because they don't define themselves as. Uh, disciplined or constant um, or consistent mm -hmm. persons so they are like no I am never disciplined I think I was not born that way or I see myself with others and I say that I am not disciplined or I cannot commit with anything so I need coaching for getting that and then of course the te the thing of improving the, their habits you know like they mm -hmm. just want to improve and get like a better and healthier lifestyle it's good. So they really see you as a helping hand, as an accountability partner, as a guide, as a facilitator, as a vehicle to help them achieve what they want. Yeah. Yeah. Beautiful. Okay. Now let's move on to your main lessons because you are already, you have been a coach yourself, right? Yeah. Of course, I have coaches, you have coaches and because we're always learning and we stay humble because we know we have so much more to learn. Of course. And I want learned. you to share with us two or three key lessons you have learned, either from coaches or from life itself. Share with us your three top lessons. Ooh, well, I love this. Oh, oh okay. my God. Oh my God. Yeah. <laughs> I love this question because I've been learning a lot. So, well, I first, I think the first one was learning to ask for help. Um, you know, we all have this tendency of feeling like we say, like, even though we know we're not the center of everything and it's not everything on us and do we do have amazing support, you know, and guidance from something bigger. Still, you think that, oh, okay, you know, it's only me and God through the world and I'm going to be okay. I got to figure it out. God loves me. The universe loves, loves me. That's okay. And then also, I don't know if you feel this some sometimes, but also because we're carrying this part of, okay, I am a coach, so I need to know how to do this or I should have figured it out this sooner, you know? So as I was saying, part of me now using the self-compassion as one of my main principles in life comes from this big learning that I just realized that, hey, it's okay to not be okay all the time. And also it is okay to ask for help and, and, and raising your hand and say, hey, you know, the coach needs a coach right now or the motivator needs motivation right now, you know, and that's okay to look for that or ask for it. So I would say like being vulnerable enough mm -hmm. to open and say, hey, I think I would love for you to listen to me this time or mm -hmm. with your with my family, with my friends, you know, like with your support system that sometimes I think that they see you as this strong person and sometimes again i am strong but i i am not made of steel no, right? it's a good it's a good point because uh, as you just said because we are coaches or mentors or masters whatever people see us as super strong they see us as heroes we don't have any problems or we can deal with anything right without any help because we're superheroes people see us this way and if we don't stay alert we may start believing that we can be heroes all the time and we don't need anybody help right exactly exactly 
So we need to fight against this expectations people have of us and stay humble, stay human. Not only because we are human, but because by staying human, we stay connected with other human beings, right? right? So we cannot pretend we are heroes. We cannot pretend we know everything. We cannot pretend we don't have any problems. We cannot pretend we don't need help. Because if we if we pretend all those things, we are not truthful anymore. We are not real anymore. We become a fantasy. We become a token. We become, I don't know, right? Yeah, yeah, and, and yeah. So this lesson is super important. Super. Uh, learn that we, it's okay to not be okay. It's okay to ask for help because everybody needs somebody sometime. 100%. So that would be my first one. The second one is a part of the importance of having a community. The importance that is being connected. You know, the importance of relationships, the importance of networking, the importance to connect and collaborate. I think collaboration is the ultimate power that sometimes we lose as humans. We are like living in comparison, you know, like comparing with each other, thinking that everyone is your competence. And then it's just like, no, the world comes and the world becomes a better place to live and be in when you see everyone as your future collaborator or, you know, as someone that, hey, I, I can learn something from you. We all can learn from everyone. And I don't know, having conversations with me, uh, you know, like with others, with others, literally for me, that has been, oof, like so, so, so uh, transforming. And that has opened me like a whole new perspective about getting very curious about getting to know new people and saying, hey, I don't even, you know, know what do I want from you or like that. No, no, it's not like that. It's just being open to get to know a new person, to connect with someone new, to learn from his or her mindsets, her beliefs, her habits. And then you start creating powerful spaces and connections that then you realize that it's super nice to be in a in a community, you know? Yeah, beautiful, beautiful, yes. Great. Another one? I love that. And then the third one, I would say that, oh, okay, so. Yeah, the, the third, third is the charm, right? The third is yeah. when we start. So let me think about the third one. Like, that, that means we're growing, we're growing, we're reaching out of, a, out of a comfort zone. I like it. <laughs> Let's oh, go. oh my gosh, I know this. The third one, would be stay stay awake okay because and that means i love i consider myself literally like an olympic learner because i'm always trying to learn something new but also not get in the in the comfort zone in terms of oh yeah i'm already in a good place hey i already know this and that my methodology works, you know, I'm doing things that work. I think, like you just say previously, staying humble is super important, but part of staying humble is stay like stay awake and not go to sleep. Because if we stop doing, I don't know, things that make us be on guard, if we start not committing to our own, you know, um, habits and routines and principles, then you say, oh, it's one day or two days or three days. And suddenly, you know, you lose motion, you lose traction. And I think that we do need to stay awake and to keep improving for us and for others, you know, because we do have a responsibility with ourselves and with others of becoming and, and getting ourselves, you know, our best version. But mm -hmm. sometimes people think that, hey, you're already your best version. It's like, no, far from that. I think we're always in constant, you know, evolution. evolution. And I think we we don't need to take that for granted. It's like, no, I need to keep doing the work, you know? So stay awake and do the work. Perfect, perfect, yeah. You know, when people ask me, what is the meaning of life? I say evolution. Yeah. What else? Evolution, just evolve, <laughs> right? If we keep evolving, that's the meaning of life. We are here to evolve, to grow, and to help other people. That's that's what why we're here for. Sure. Let's now be very specific about 
people may be watching, they are C-level executives, they are leaders, business owners, right? And what would be, even if they, even if they don't want to work with a coach right now, let's say you would give them like two or three action steps for them to start their journey to achieve better results in their lives. Okay. So what would you tell them? Okay. These are two or three action steps you can start right now, even without hiring a coach, you can start on your own to move forward towards your dreams or your better version. I love that. First of all, I would say, hey, get curious. Get curious about others. Get curious about your existence. Get curious about your life conditions, you know, Um, and get curious in questioning, is it the best life that you could be living right now, you know? Or if the day of tomorrow you're not here anymore, would you be satisfied and fulfilled? So that would be my first recommendation. Get curious about your life. Ask some questions, you know, get that time. Then the second one would be, um, are you having meaningful conversations? So I would highly recommend them to, if you're a leader, go with your team, you know, or with your direct reports. If you're a father, go with your uh, kids or if you're a husband with your wife and vice versa, right? And ask, hey, how can I have these meaningful conversations and opening the space by saying, how can I be a better dad, a better husband, a better leader? What do you expect from me as a leader, as a dad, as a kid, as a mother, as a wife? I think when we have these meaningful conversations that start on, hey, my availability, and proactivity of asking, how can I be better in this role with you yeah, directly? Oof. That's I'll brilliant. Are gonna that's transform. brilliant. And, and it's simple at the same time because this is what we really do. We, we, we usually do when we are serving our clients, right? When you have clients, every now and then you go to your clients, how can I better serve you? Yeah. How can I better assist you, right? So we do that so normally with clients but we don't do that with our Personal employees our, our our relatives why right so it's so simple and brilliant at the same time treat people as clients sometimes ask them how can i be a better dad how can i be a better mom how can i be a better husband a better wife so as if because you actually should be interested in serving them better in so many ways because if you serve them better That means that you are yourself getting into a better version of yourself, you know? So that's so important and important. And then the third one would be literally start creating or start writing what would be the things that you would like to improve in your life. You know, having clarity on what are the things that I need to improve, then it's going to open the next door or the next is going to lead you to the next step of saying, okay, then what I need to do in order to improve that. No, because sometimes you don't even question yourself. What do I need to improve in my life? Or what would I like to have different, you know? So writing them and getting clarity on them, on that, maybe Mm -hmm. it's going to start giving you brainstorming, you know, or something about saying, oh yeah, I actually would need to do this and that and creating action plans towards that. I really like your three action steps. It really guides people through getting to motion. No. So I I really appreciate and people watching, go back, replay, watch (laughs) this again. So you can take notes of the three action steps you can take today. Now, please, Mariana, share with us. I'm sure people watching by now, they, they know how fabulous you are already, if they didn't know before. And maybe they're asking themselves, okay, what if I want to get in contact with Mariana? How is her process? How How is like working with her? So explain t- to me a little bit, how is the process of getting in contact with you? Uh, what are the first things that probably will happen if somebody wants to work with you? Yeah. So basically, you know, first steps, like reaching out to me, you know, there are different ways they can send me an email, you know, or in my webpage, they can always uh, have like this contact 
uh, action button or um, also, you know, Instagram, social media, you're always like one inbox away to talk to the other person, LinkedIn as well. So yeah, I'm always, a, a, how do you say, like intentional on being aware of checking those ways of contact me. Then we jump into a conversation. I always love for, for them whenever they contact me to actually have like a maybe 15 minutes or 20 minutes call without any commitment on fees or charging, stuff, nothing like that. But for me is to understand, hey, what are you looking or why would you like coaching? Because sometimes we think we need coaching, but maybe it's therapy, you know, or maybe it's kind of a, a, like a psychological support or whatever. And I'm saying this without any judgment at all. Huh? You know, sometimes we believe that coaching is what we need in this season of our lives. And maybe, again, it's something else what you need to do. So I really mm -hmm. want to be clear that also the, the coachee knows what is what exactly is coaching and what is not coaching because there is a lot of misinformation out there. So that's my first, you know, clarity checkpoint call. I call it like that, that just saying that, hey, you're aware that this is coaching and tell me a little bit about what are you th thinking about wanting to hire yeah, this process. Then if all of that, we are keep like we're still on the same page, then we proceed to the part where this person can actually uh, select the kind of, of packages of coaching and that means the intensity of the sessions that this person is, is gonna like uh, require so it can be the 13 package session it could be the 10 or it could be the five Excellent. what does this mean is that maybe you know this person has been already coached in other seasons or maybe he needs like only this little push you know this little like guidance or a component for only two months that would be the ideal for the five sessions. But maybe this person is completely new to the coaching process and maybe this person actually want to do like and touch several points. Mm -hmm. So maybe like a longer one, the 13 or the 10, you know, period session, it's the ideal. What's the main difference between the 13 and the 10th? Because it's like, hey, it's only adding three more. You know? <laughs> What's that about? Okay, because on the 13th, we actually do some assessments in the way. So okay. there are some sessions that are only specialized and hey, today is the assessment day, you know? So that session might be a little bit more oriented to some kind of assessments if you would like to have them, you know? Right. Yeah. And then yeah. the 10th, well, is the 10 sessions. And of course the frequency, it's like I have clients that want it weekly or I have clients that it's every other 15 days, which is okay. It's, you know, that is very personalized on the agenda of the client. And everything is basically automatized, you know, they do select the, the package, then they choose to pay. And then once they do the payment, they are uh, they have the accessibility and the access to the agenda and they are scheduling, you know, whenever they see my my availability. Yeah, my times. Yeah. And of and course you can you first. can do it in, in English or Spanish. Right. 100%. Yeah. English and Spanish. Anything else? I'm sorry if I cut you off. No, no, no. That would be like the process, you know? So in these sessions, of course, it's like one hour, 45 minutes effective. And then I like also 15 minutes for next steps or saying hi, you know, taking longer just to make sure that we are okay with mm -hmm. constructing this safe space. And mm -hmm. then of course, yeah, like, um, you know, the sessions are, are a beautiful journey. What can I tell? You know, you know how this works. But yeah, it's just opening uh, for discovering more about each of us. And Excellent. Excellent. Okay. So everybody watching, of course, I'm going to put underneath the video in the description of the video, I'm going to put all the, all the ways to contact Mariana, uh, her website, LinkedIn, Instagram, all the links possible so there's no excuse whatsoever if you want to really have this fabulous coach by your side guiding you through the journey of self-discovery so you can become better in what you do better person better professional she's the one that can really assist you 
I endorse Mariana Macias because she's a wonderful human being as well. Not only a fabulous professional, but a wonderful human being. So Mariana, I'm going to give you like a few seconds if you want to say your final message to our audience, and then we can say goodbye and next time. But your final message, please. Yay. Well, I just want to say thanks for listening, first of all. You know, I don't take that for granted. It was time. And second of all, I would say get curious. You know, like I think the best gift in life that we can give to ourselves is basically question, question, question your life, question yourself, question your thoughts, question your beliefs, and even question your emotions when you are in a in a place where you don't want, you know? So that's the genesis of a lot of things. And my last saying would be also, you know, try to, I don't know, like to receive and, and, and be open for what's possible in your life and may come. All right. So ladies and gentlemen, Mariana Macias coaching, a fabulous coach, a fabulous human being. This is Fabulous with Fabio, the talk show that reveals how fabulous we can be. And this is no post-production, no editing, no cutting. This is raw and authentic as life is. So I want to thank you everybody for watching. Remember, this is the YouTube channel Fabio Marcus 007, Fabio Marcus 007. And you can also listen to this interview later in our podcast, Powerful Insights for Business. And if you want to know more about this talk show, go to fabuloswithfabio.com, fabuloswithfabio.com. And maybe you can be my next guest if you can prove to me that you are fabulous and you can inspire other people. Thank you so much. 